Wat in de vreemde grap op mij, maar ik zei dat het niet ook in vervallen There is a second chance. So I'm going to give two examples. Hey, right, Mens, your audio changed slightly somehow. It was good, and then it slightly a little bit less. It's still, we can still hear you. Maybe it's the Martian. Could you hear me now? Yes, but something's different in the quality. I don't know what it is. Should I come out and come back in? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a guy. I don't, I'm not the guy. Um, go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, fine. So let me, explain, let me give you two examples of a second chance. It was once a, a multi-million dollar company. And there were people that were being voted in to the board. And a certain individual that once the board was voted in, a certain individual from the board was going to come become the CEO. And this one guy was campaigning amongst everybody, I want to become the CEO. So what happened was he goes to his childhood friend, who's his one of his best buddies, who's on the board. And he says, listen, me and you go back so many years. I need you. I need your vote. Now, in his head, he was thinking, I do not want to vote for him. He's not the best guy for the CEO. And he keeps on bothering him. He says, with your vote, I go over the top. And I was going over and over and over. Then all of a sudden, comes his time. Who is voting for so-and-so? He holds his nose and he raises his hand for his friend. And his friend becomes the CEO of the company for eight years. Till the next election, he is the CEO. For eight years, he regretted that vote because this man took the company from a multi-million dollar company and literally led it into the ground. Eight years later came, and his friend wants to be CEO again, and he has better ideas. So he goes over to his best friend, would you vote for me? So now he says, I have a second chance. So the second chance is, I can get rid of him. I got a second chance. Is that what the feed to get up means by a second chance? Hold that story off for a second. Another example, a guy is a baseball player, a great baseball player. He can swing for the fences. He is fantastic. His base is loaded, two outs at the bottom of the ninth, and they're down by a run. They need one run to tie the game, at least get tied. His manager in the dugout goes and says to him, bunt the ball, bunt. Don't swing, but just, just make contact with the ball. The guys are playing so deep for you that if you hit it a little bit this way, you'll go in between the foul line and the pitcher. The guy on third base will come home. You'll be safe. You'll be on first. Fantastic. He doesn't listen to the manager. He swings. Strike one. The manager is putting the one side on the whole stadium can see. But the players in the field know he's not going to listen because he goes and swings again to strike two. Now the manager's furious. You can, we can win the World Series. Just listen to me. And what happens is, and he goes and he says, huh? People are calling me, the audio is bad. Let me try this. One minute. Let me see if this will work. One second. Right, man, tell you go out. Maybe, as you said, go out and go back in. Okay, is the audio better? Yeah, yeah, much better. Okay. Much better. Okay, thank you. So he goes and he says, I'm not going to listen to my coach. I'm a home run hitter. I'm not going to bunt to tie the game. I'm going to swing. I'm going to keep this two strikes. 
pitcher knowing that he's going to most probably swing. So instead of throwing them a fastball, he throws them a curve. The guy swings, strike three. Ball game over, World Series over. If only he had a second chance, what would he do now? But it's too late. It goes down in history. His team lost. So what does a second chance mean? That you get up again in the next inning, there's another game, and maybe now he'll listen to the manager? Is that what the Fidei de Gerev, this great, great, Alk, the great Nossi, is telling me that I'm able to allow eight years to go to the garbage, and now I have a second chance to rectify it? Is that what it means, a second chance? That next year, if I'm in the World Series, I could do better. But last year is by a lot what is for Is that what it means? No. That's not what the Fini Together says. And this is what the secret of Pesach Sheni is. When the Fini Kerebbe said that Nidokin Fafalana, no matter how far away from Judaism you are, or know how from you are, no matter how from you are. The moment you do tshuva, you see, the moment you do tshuva, that's your second chance. The moment you say, I want to change, comes Chassidus and says, all your zedoinus are now zachiyas. All of your sins, which led you to do tshuva, is what made you into a better person. So you, the guy who lost eight years of money, cannot be changed. The guy who lost the World Series, you can't change history. Comes the free to get up and says, when it comes to Yiddish guy, no matter what you've done, hide the shady. You were tame, you were defiled, you were far on the road. You should have been in the base of Nikdosh. You decided to go to Ireland and drink scotch. And have Chomet Chaz Risholom on the 14th of Nisan. You are far from the road. And now all of a sudden, it's a today. And on the 14th day of Eon, you go and you say, Rabbi Shalom, here's my Pesach, here's my Matzah, here's my Moror. The Tshuva that you've done made you a better person than you were yesterday. Because only about Shuva recognizes where he was and how much better he could be. A banker can't make up for the loss. A ball player will go down in history, a loser. A yid that takes the opportunity to come back, your entire past is your story. And then you can go on a speaking tour and says, let me tell you my story. I was born in Kentucky. I was born in Yehopit. And I didn't know about Yiddishkeit. Or another person says, I was in Yiddishkeit. And then all of a sudden, I went away from Yiddishkeit. And I wrote a whole script for Netflix called Unorthodox. And everybody loved me. And I was the most unbelievable secular Jew. And I ran away from Yiddishkeit. Aha! But then I said to myself, me on me, more on me. What do I have from all of this? Do I have a Shabbos? Do I have a Piskindalach? What do I have? That I got a little bit of fame that I was able to go and knock my mother and my father. This is them. So there's a lot of negativity. But the moment the person goes and says, Rabbi Nishalaylam, Lama Nigora, Satudvei. I can't leave, I can't be without you, Almighty. Bring me home. And all of a sudden, the story that you go to everybody in the world and says, yeah, I was that person un unorthodox. I was that person that grew up, not himself. Whatever your story is, comes to free the game and says, that's what it means, Pesach Shani, a second chance. Everything that you've done until now is okay. Because it's part of your story. The Mavus, the Maisa, the well-known story about the, the rock legends of Lubavitch. You ever notice we, we, we talk about rock legends, you know, like they're the best in the world. To us, they're the best in the world. 
um, the Piemontes. It's well known that the Piemontes were in Europe. They were part of a major, major rock band. And anybody knows anything about a rock band, you're not supposed to, you, you don't want to know what's done on the, on the stage or off the stage, Vahulu. And the two of them became thrum. And all of a sudden they became epis. There's no music in me anymore. I'm now wearing thousand film. So he wrote to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe said, why can't you play music? He says, just go. Good chassidish. So I remember the very first time that they came out of the closet. They were not called the Piamenta Band. I don't know if anybody knows this. They were first called the Balshemto Band. They called themselves the Balshemto Band. And I remember it was advertising, Got you throw New York, come, let's say Shabbos, because we're going to have a concert. And it was Shabbos Nachmo. So what happened was, is that Motzei Shabbos, the whole camp is getting ready for a concert. People from the bungalow colonies were invited that they could come and listen. And I got to tell you something, this is Emes Yatsev. I was a counselor. I had Freya kids in my bunk. In those days, Ganyas all had both the Chesidische kids and the non chesidische Kinderlach. And in my bunk at that time was Baruch Epstein, who's today a Shliach in... Uh, I could go through four or five people. Barry Scheidman was uh, part of the camp at that time. Was a shliach. Uh, Heshi Epstein was a sh- uh, Many Balchumas were in that room, but they weren't from yet. They were kidding a lot. All of a sudden, this group gets on, and they wear these funny uh, yarmulkes, which in Crown Heights, we haven't seen these color yarmulkes. Now on Pico, you can see it all over the place. Now just all, you can see these uh, funny-looking colored yarmulkes. And all of a sudden he says, we're going to sing the first rock and roll song in Judaism. And I remember all the counselors looked at each other. Rock and roll song. What are you trying to be cool? Uh-oh, who do we got here? And then they got onto the electric guitar and they went, uh, you got to realize something. In Lubavitch, prior to this, I never heard of an electric guitar. This is 1976, 77. And they went like this. And all of a sudden they just stopped. With a with the drum. Says, so, does anybody know the rock song? And all of a sudden we're all going and saying, Rock song? It sounds like electric guitar. This is mommy. What are you doing to us? <laughs> and we're looking and says, What's Tutsak? He says, What? You never heard of Allah Sela? Oh, oh, it's a rock song on the rock. You hit and out came water. And he goes, <laughs> All of a sudden the drum started going. And they started fluting and everything for four hours. Unge Schwitz and Unge Chazet, the most chassidish in the Gunim, but they taught us the rhythm of the next generation. And this is what the Rebbe said that's your story. They never went back. They took their entire past and all the things that they may have, God forbid, have done, and the beauty of what about Shuvah is, and the beauty of a person, no matter who they are and what they are. The fact that you done whatever you did, don't care about the baseball game. That you can't fix. Don't care about the amount of money you voted because ugh, you wish you had a second vote. When it comes to Yiddishkeit, your whole past becomes the story of your Yiddishkeit and your Yiddishkeit. And that you know, what the Fiyid the Rebbe said, when it comes to Pesach Sheini, you're on the road. So what? That, from there, is where the Dira B'tach comes from. It's from there, your Nefesh Bahamas transforms into a Nefesh Shalikus. You don't need to worry about the past, because the past is going to become your present, your future, and your reality. Which is, which is a vart in itself, that the Almighty gave each and every one of us chushim. He gave us the ability to play music. He gave us the, the ability to do art. To the, he gave us the ability to write. He gave us the ability to do all of these things. In many other places in the world, they tell you, don't do it. The Rebbe goes and says, 
Das is dying avoid. That this is your work. But Rabbi, Rabbi, I went to college. Rabbi did this. Rabbi did that. Comes Pesach Sheni. And the Abishta goes and says, come to me. In a few moments, I'd like to take a break, a niggin. Now that I taught you what the second chance is, the bigger question is, why did they say Lomani Gada? Why are we being left out? Because if you really hear the Sicha from the Rebbe, it's kind of chutzpah to say the words, Lomani Gada. L'chaim. L'chaim, l'chaim. Allah <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi uh, Yoey, can we hear a live version of the uh, your new niggin, the brand new niggin that just came out tonight? Is this, this the first premiere of the niggin? First time. First you have to say l'chaim. Okay. I'm, I'm getting for that. Let's do that. L'chaim, the whole story of the niggin is, the, is that it's never too late. Last, last Pesach Sheni, I, I, walked out, I walked outside and I started to sing it. Just the, the tune. And, uh, but then nothing happened. But then a few days ago, a week ago, whatever, I started to say, I have to do something. So, and then, and I was experiencing some, uh, it's, you know, when you want to do something, you have to work hard. And then there's this, you know, there's, there's setbacks and it's not always, doesn't go. I said, but the whole point of this song is that it's never too late. And don't, don't be a fool and miss the, the chance to get it done. That's the word. Don't miss it. You have a chance, get it done. Chaim, Chaim. This is when life is good. The first part, I think, is when life's good, I'll have to say that at least you think it's good. You think it's okay. In Mithamol, you have a setback, you have a, a, a challenge in your life. Yeah, 
Hai Ramai. Over Pesach Sheini, don't be lazy. You got, you got another chance. It's Pesach Sheini, don't be lazy. You got, you got another chance. It's Pesach Sheini, don't be lazy. You got, you got another chance. It's Pesach Sheini, don't be lazy. You got, you got another chance. It's Pesach Don't be lazy. You got, you got, you got another chance. Pesach Don't be lazy. You got, you got another Chaim. Beautiful. 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 And you'll be able to be to sing that. Real soon, we still have a few hours to be able to go and sing it. That the Aveda, I feel if the Mashiach comes, we'll still go and say this was one of the songs that we made. Because I don't know any other songs of Pesach Shemi, unless Yom Teverlech made that nigan. So I just want you to know much, Nick. We're going to push you to the front of the line. And so that's, that's, is, uh, that's the only nigan in the world for Pesach Shemi. <laughs> right. I, I, I was thinking that the Mashiach himself, we're telling Mashiach, yeah, you should have come many times. You had chances to come. But you know what? You could still come. We give you another chance. You come now. It's never too late. You could still come now. Thanks. You know, there's a, there's a story. And then I'll go back to what I want to say. After was, Elia Novi came and announced that in three days, he was going, Mashiach was going to come. So what happened was, is that all of a sudden, the whole world went crazy. So Bnei Brak hooked up with Lakewood and said, Heaven. I have to make a safe a pilpul, a gavaltke, a pilpul, a toida, with a schneiden. We have to give him a gift, a, a book of our, our brilliant kaifzit. All of a sudden, Lubavitch got together with all the chsidim, said, Chev, there's going to be a big party in 770 in front of, you know, on Eastern Parkway over here. Kum tzazan, he gave me Thompson. Okay, we all got together. So what happened was, when Mashiach finally showed up, he said like this, listen, cover that data. I should go and... Chaim, I can go later for a bit. Let me, let me, let me at least have. See, so he goes over and he says, "I heard you guys are making me a kovitz, a book full of Torah." So the Rashi says, "Einachanami." And we started looking over all the the verta. We get questions, and it's it, nishke pash. Tell you what, Mashiach, come back in two weeks. Maybe we'll have something for you. He goes, "Ah." He comes to seven seventy. They push him. You know, you know how it is in seven seventy. You push and push and push. He comes up, and all of a sudden, they give him, uh, they say, So they, all the bottles are empty, so they fill up a little kelishka of a little bit of Johnny Walker, a little bit of Crown Royal, a little bit of Smirnoff. They say, Mashiach, here. Yeah. He says, For Melech Mashiach, this is what you give me? A kelishka of vodka? This is what you give me? It's not, it, 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 it's not befitting. So they said, who asked you to come so late? You come earlier, you would have had a good drink. But that's the point. Mashiach, you asked a question about Pesach Shani, what took him so long? Very good. All right. If you got it, you got it. If you didn't, what can I tell you? So the main part of the story, which is written in the Torah, is that Yidin came over to Moshe Rabbeinu. Jews came over to Moshe Rabbeinu and said, Moshe, we are defiled. We need to do, we want to do Pesach. But already Hashem commanded us that we're off the hook. We don't have to do it. And we're coming to you, Moshe. Tell us what to do. Now, we got to ask the question, who are these people that came to Moshe Rabbeinu and asked? So there's two, there's two different Mepharshim that I found. One is those that buried Nadav and Avihu. They went and they, you know, they didn't have the, maybe the Poraduma, whatever it took. They didn't get what they needed. Others say these were the ones that were carrying the bones of Yosef, which 
have Shailus on, etc. I mean, Yosef, the bones of Yosef, how you metama anybody, but I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, that's what the Medjish says. It was the people carrying Yosef, they were Tame. Do you realize who we're talking about here? One set of Jews was so holy that they were able to hold the rope that was coming out of the Kedish HaKadosh the Holy of Holies and take the great Tzadikim. The heavenly condition doesn't just throw out. You go, it's your heavenly condition where there's somebody really, really holy. They get the holy ones to go do the Tahara. So who were the ones that did the Tahara for another one of you? These were big, big Siddim of Moshe. They were big holy rollers. The ones that were carrying Yosef, are you kidding me? Think anybody was carrying Yosef? Anybody was carrying Yosef, again, it was somebody that knew look what they backwards and forwards. A chassid. What is a chassid? Somebody who's totally given over to Moshe. You never questioned Moshe. You never questioned the Rabbi Shalom. If they ever told you that you don't have to do something, Schweig, you're quiet. And it was quiet. So when all of a sudden Hashem told Moshe, go and tell those chassidim who are tahar, they have to do Passover. Those that are not tahar, that they have to wait. No, then they, they don't have to do it. Could you imagine going over to the Rebbe and said, Rebbe, you told me I don't have to do it. But I want to. Are you kidding me? Anybody sitting here in this room? Anybody on this Zoom? Do you have a Havamina to walk over to Moshe, to go over to the Rebbe and said, I know you told me I don't have to do it, but I still would like to do something. Nobody on earth, nobody on earth would ever question. So it comes the question, what is Loma Nigoda? This question was asked by the Rebbe, by Fabregen, Pesach Sheni, in the year 1984. I remember I was here in Westwood. I was working here. It was, be, it was already Tzivus Hashem. And this was the big year of parades. If anybody remembers, 1984, every little community did a parade. We did hundreds of parades here in California. And here I was, and the Rebbe was asking this question. The Rebbe answers a Gavaldic thing, something unbelievable. You're right. God said you didn't have to do it. You're right. God made sure your Rebbe said, You don't have to do it. Go home. The fact that you're taking care of Nodav and Avil, the fact that you're taking care of Yehsei, you already have taken care of Pesach. Don't worry about it. Comes the Rebbe and explains. They were sitting in their homes. And they were, they were, they were, I need Hashem. I need, there's nothing else. Why can't I do this too? He was bothering him to the core. These people, he was bothered, he could chep it. Not that they went over to the Rebbe. I know you told me no. They came bawling their eyes out. Their nishada was crying. Their kishkas were crying. And they were saying, Lama Nigoda, why can't we bring a Kurdish? Which Chassidus means comes closer to the old time. Comes closer to the body. Comes Moshe and says, whoa, I never saw such oiris from any yid. Azat Shukya, such a desire, such a gishrei. I don't know how to answer you. Because I'm Moshe Rabbeinu, I can only answer to you what the Abishta gave to me. So even Moshe Rabbeinu had to go and say, You stand here. I got to go to the Rabbeinu Shalom. The Rabbeinu Shalom kept in the Geniza, a mitzvah, Geniza in the treasure. There'll come a time where there will be Yidin 
that will be so. I need you. I feel who came by kindness, even in holiness. That was the cry of Lomani God. It comes the Abish and says, when Jews come like this, such an oil, such a giloy, I have something for you. And what is it? In oil, which is mixed with chuva, which is mixed with, 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 with chesed shibahoy. I mean, you think about it. It's mind-boggling. All of a sudden, the Abishai goes and says, I have a mitzvah for all of you that feel this way. Comes the Rebbe and says, Anasi, a Rebbe, a Meishar Abbeinu, stands there. And we give you an answer for everything. But there's one thing we weren't prepared for. Aza Ur, Aza Loma Nigoda. That when you really, really have that, the Abishta pours down from his treasures such unbelievable oil, which is a gilui, that didn't come through regular way, a revelation that did not come through any regular ways. So the Rebbe, at that Fabreg and Poshid get brought out a fantastic concept. You know, the Rebbe always brings out how we should all be like Chava, even we have one second, like Eve Chava. To have one second to eat from the Eitz Adas, if it means we would die. If we only could have that one moment that we want to know Hashem, and it's worthwhile, the greatness of Chava, or the greatness of Nadav and Avihu, that they went into the Kodesh at the Holy of Holies, and they said, we know we're going to die, but who cares? We will know! These Chevra weren't going into the Eitz Adas. These Chevra were not going into the Holy of Holies. What were these guys going for? My kish kish. The fact that I'm Tomei, that has nothing to do with my etzim and neshama, that has nothing to do with my connection with the, with the Almighty. This is something. <laughs> what do you want from me? How do I get out of Egypt? How do I get out of whatever? How do I connect to you? That I can bring a cordon. Hashem says, ah. This is Chavrid. What the Rabbi Shalom did, what the Almighty did was, he immediately went and revealed Oedis. Each one of us have to realize at a very high level. But not really. Let's think about it. Every once in a while, we do sit down and we go, we hear, you know, I saw Shliach do X, Y, and Z. Why didn't I do that? I don't do anything. Or sometimes you hear it during this whole Corona thing. There's a shliach, he does four classes a day. Or this guy, he took a truck and he went in front of someone's house and he said, happy birthday. These are little things that we hear from everybody else. And we ask, why wasn't that inspiration in me? Why? Lomini God, I wish I had this. If you really cry, it really bothers you. You'll be an inspiration from your Moshe Rabbeinu through the Abishta, and you'll have kol, keiches, all the energy, all the energies that you need from the Almighty through our great Rebbe. And there's nothing you can't accomplish. You know, they say jealousy is a bad thing, but jealousy is also a good thing. Jealousy that someone else is tar b'chokhmah, that some kin is from Tabak Chokhmah, that somebody else is learning more than you, and you're jealous, how I wish I could do like him, is a good jealousy. If you see another Shliach learning, if you see another Shliach doing something, and if you see somebody, and it, the moment you go and ask yourself, why wasn't that in me? Why, why couldn't I? That is your Loma Nigara moment. Question is, what are you going to do with your Loma Nigara moment? So the reality is, before we go on to a song and everything, I, I want to speak something out. You can sit by a lot of Fabregas. We all do. I, I, I got to tell you something. I sometimes sit in the Zoom. I keep my thing closed. I don't want anybody seeing, you know, 
you know, we're all brittle or whatever. Ego, they shouldn't see. But you hear things. And the reality is you hear a lot of things and you ask yourself, you're inspired and you ask yourself, why don't they make that a reality? So the thing is, the reality is we have a beautiful nefsha bahams. <laughs> it's mamish. By the time we go to sleep, we wake up the next day. Your wives turn to you and they say to you, uh, no, what'd you hear last night? I said, I heard an unbelievable story. You said, this clear does this. Okay, very good. You told it over. You got on to your routine and you totally forgot about it. It's exactly what the Yetar was. A woman you got has to be, you could change yourself. Now to that, and I, saw, I said this, I think a few years ago at the Fabregen by, uh, by your shul, that the whole avoid of Yutes Kislev, the whole avoid of Tanya is, is to be an Ovid. You have to work on yourself. When you realize there's a great program and you didn't jump all over it, why? Why didn't you jump all over it? Why didn't you jump all over it? And the answer is because I didn't work on myself to make sure it happened. That's the bottom line. You, you're going to come up with a thousand excuses. I, I had to cover the bank. That, 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 that. I got to be honest with you. Lag Ba'im is coming. I'm a guy all my life doing Sivis Hashem. Lag Ba'im was a day like there's no tomorrow. My daughter got married on Lag Ba'im. She and her husband, Hobbin, Kindelach, and Dalgut, the Zachin, and Echai, and Zayn, and Ravicha. And Lag Ba'im is coming. But we was there in Lag Ba'im. My daughter's getting married very nice. But where was I? I was by the parade. Why was I by the parade? What are you talking about? Why well, was I at the parade? Where else are you going to be? Taking pictures? Now, there's nothing wrong taking pictures. This is your daughter's wedding. But you could spend a couple hours. The wedding's not until four or five hours. By the way, they don't need you anyway, the makeup lady. They don't need nothing but you. So here's like Boima. We have the unbelievable intellect in our heads. And I'm telling you, over the next two, three days, I'm you're, gonna be, you're gonna be screaming, Lord of God, why didn't I think of that? Or, I heard about it. Ah, it's so easy, I could have done it. And so many of us may be, God forbid, sitting, or some of us, I hope not a lot, two, three, Shlokim said, it's Corona, what do you want? You want me? I don't want my people thinking I'm crazy. So let me tell you something. There are phenomenal ideas out there. One shliach is making up a big truck and he's going with cars and telling everybody. By the way, the conservative temple, Al Tiftach Peh, to the Sutton, but the conservative temple on Ventura Boulevard for Hey Ear, they told all the congregants, get in a car. You're home anyway. Park on Ventura Boulevard. And, the, and it's going to go through the parking lot. And they went all along Burbank Boulevard. And they came out in North Hollywood. And they had hundreds of cars. And they said to everybody else of their membership, if you're not in the car route, you have to come out on Ventura Boulevard. And Mr. Mouse give on an Israeli day parade. You're telling me that they know better than us what to do? They've been working on it for weeks. We the parade people. But it's Corona, so some of us have a yet on. Other people are doing great ideas. They're doing the same thing. Other people I heard, they're literally mailing to people's homes or dropping it off in mailboxes the night before. A couple of hot dogs. Not that hot dogs is going, uh, you know, the Rashbi is a thing. With, the, with marshmallows and with the chocolate, with, with, with s'mores, with all the makes no difference. We have to do this. Why? Because we have to let people know this, that, that like Ba'ayme is the Rebbe's holiday. I got to tell you something. You want to talk about any holiday that's the Rebbe's holiday? Don't give, what, what, what holiday is the Rebbe's Yom Tif? Put him. It's Hasamagila. Which is the Rebbe's Yom Tif? Pesach Shani, the feeling you can ever grab it. What is the Rebbe's Yom Tif? I'm telling you, it's Lag Bahim. How many of you ever watched Lag I don't know how many of you were alive during Lag Bahim, but how many of you watched the video? The Rebbe Pashit comes out. 
Vias Hamashiach. With the royalty, with the red, with the ah, the the are the, the hold for for weeks, and fantasizing how to make the Rebbe, because this is his Yom Tif. How the Rebbe said, like, I want it everywhere, everywhere. So all of a sudden you're thinking, I'm, the Rebbe's looking in Shemaim, and he's going like this. All right, guys, I gave you a good one. No, I want to see a duch. What did you do? Got to do something. Shloishis, you make Kabbalah. We only have three, four days before the Shabbos in between. But the reality is, there's a lot that we can do. So those ideas that people have, you can share amongst yourselves. I'm renting a truck. I'm letting you all know. I'm renting a truck with a big TV, you know, one of those big TV things. I'm already signing up people to go in front of their houses and making a five-minute lawn party. We'll have a story of Lag Bema. We'll have the Rebbe singing, you know, uh, by the by, by, by the Lag Boimah parade for a minute, uh, a funny uh, a game. And every single person will get the hot dogs and the s'mores, you know what I'm saying? But they'll all stand in the lawn, we'll do the six feet. So, long minute ago, why did I think of that? Because that was for me. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you can still do it. It's a tut vey by the, it has to bother you. When it's a tut vey, then the oiris from the Abish himself will come right through the devil to you. And the devil will give you enough drachis. You know, I, I got to be honest with you. you. We both know it. This is, I know Mendel Duchman says, now is the time to fundraise. Yeah, how much money are we getting in our Chabad houses? Are you kidding me? It's the hardest time to fundraise. The people of your preschool are complaining, but I have to pay the full tuition. You know what it is. Or if some of us are part of Beis Mitzal, you're already screaming, I hate them and I have to pay the full tuition. Yeah, so to run such a truck, it's close to pull down. Will I get an honorary? Will I not get an honorary? It's not my problem. So today, like Boyba is going to come and go, and I'm going to sit crone and watch YouTube. <laughs> no. This is the Rebbe is a Yomtev. I don't know any other Yomtev that is the Rebbe is a Yomtev like this. This is where we bring the Rebbe, Melch Basada. In a matter, woman, no, in no, 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 Hey. Hey, Trinai, ya ma, 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 ya ma,
And the same thing, the Rebbe has a question. Think about it. It was brought up in the Torah studies this week, but it's a Gishmak of art. I'd like to bring to it. The Rebbe goes and says, if you think about it, when the Jews went and said, Lamani Gada, what does it mean to you and I? The reality is, how many mitzvahs are there in the Taita? 613. How many of them can we actually do today outside there to throw? Outside uh, about 270. I think it's, uh, yeah. How many can we actually do on a day to day basis? It's about 79. You have Pesach, you have Rosh Hashanah, and Kippur. How many mitzvahs does I have from a year? Are we? So the Rebbe goes and says, but if you look in Rashi, Rashi goes and says, the Pesach Sheni, why is it not at the beginning of Chumash Amidbar, the fourth Chumash? Why is it somewhere hidden in the middle? It's out of chronological order. So Rashi goes and says, because Pesach Sheni is an embarrassment to the Jewish people. An embarrassment? How could it be an embarrassment? You didn't want to do it. Why would you actually go and say it's an embarrassment? So the Rebbe goes and says, I'll tell you why. For, 39 ye- for 38 years, the Jews did not do Pesach at all. It didn't bother anybody in the whole desert to go scream, hey, love and got up. And not one person through the whole desert. It says in the Torah you do Pesach when it comes in, when you come into Eretz Yisrael. Once you come into the Holy Land, that's when you start doing Pesach. Hashem said the first year, okay, I want you to do it anyway in the desert. So once Hashem says we can do it in the desert, maybe there's another year. Nobody fainted in the whole land of the desert for 38 years. You know the story with the Chavetz Chaim. There was a decree against the Jewish people. And what happened was that they had to go to Moscow or to wherever it was. It was about the chinuch of Jewish kids to go into the public schools or not. So all the rabbis went. And they all stood in front of the minister. And they were telling the minister, we kids have to learn Torah, they have to learn Aleph Beza, this is our heritage, etc., etc., etc. When they came back without the truth happening, without the law changing, they came to the Chavetz Chaim, they said to the Chavetz Chaim, we tried, but he didn't listen to us. So the Chavetz Chaim asked, when he said no, did somebody chalish, did somebody faint? He said no. He said, can you chalish? Nobody fainted. And he realized it wasn't important to you. Because if it was important to you, you would have fainted. How can I go home? How can my child go to public school? So on that same note, because they never brought that example up once about Eretz Yisrael giving back land. So on that same note, I can, I, I'm trying to bring it to the desert. For 38 years, until they came back to the Holy Land, it didn't bother anybody. You felt it's okay not to do a mitzvah. If God doesn't want me to do a mitzvah, very good. So comes 
the Rebbe speaks in different places, that it's very easy for a person to become very complacent. And we don't do mitzvahs. I don't have to. I don't have to. The moment we become very complacent on anything, it's not for me. The moment you become complacent, Hashem says, it doesn't bother you. Then why should I help you do it? The Zaitin Golas, Zaitin Golas. It doesn't bother you that you this past year came and you didn't do a carbon Pesach. Kainik Echalish. There was no Lomani Gona. Comes Rashi and says, this is an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. Comes to Rebbe and says to the Jewish people, we have to, the Rebbe wouldn't go and say, that would, it's an embarrassment to us. Just the opposite. The Rebbe would turn it around and say to each and every one of us, you didn't do anything about it. Don't you want it? Don't you want to live as if Mashiach is here? Because it's not very that you didn't have a chance to go and bring a carbon this year for Pesach. Al-Derechzad, same thing is, you had a chance to go and put filling on a Jew. And you go, you know, I'm not a shliach, I'm a plumber. I'm a plumber. This is business. I should go and talk to the guy about putting on film. A shliach will bump into it. What, what are you kidding me? The only reason why you got the plumbing job is to put filling on the guy. Well, I'm, I'm telling you. Every, him, no. Huh? It's Tati, he just like fell asleep with it. In your room. So I just took it. Well, it's technically on, but like I'm not. Uh, somebody mute the, the, the uh, all the whatevers. All the anyway. plumbers. <laughs> all the plumbers, exactly. We got to clog up the pipes. The thing is, a guy goes, I, you should know something. Just about, I, don't, I don't know if anybody has American Home Shield. When something goes wrong, you call them up. 35, 40 bucks, they come to your house and they fix it. There's always a rush. I'm telling you, my, 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 uh, my dishwasher breaks because some Jew has to put on film. That's, I, I'm telling you, it's the only reason why it breaks. Because every single time it breaks, the guy comes to my house and I said, where are you from? Kids, are you Jewish? Sure, did you put on film? Now there's one guy, he comes two, three times, he already has his sleeve rolled up, he's ready for me already. But the point is, is that if, if you had the opportunity and you didn't do anything about it and there was no law money, God, it's an embarrassment. How did you go through this? So I want to end tonight with a beautiful story because I know you all have to wake up because you have a lot of work tomorrow, early, early in the morning. The truth is, yes, my last sites I do have. But I, I want to say a beautiful story that I'm sure many of you heard but it's all about giving a second chance. But don't ever underestimate the power of the you in the place that you're in. If God brings you to a place, there's a reason. Do not think for a second that your stam just showed up there. So there's a famous story of Rabbi Shachat. I think his name is Emmanuel Shachat. Anyway, Rabbi Shachat was asked to go and speak to a bunch of religious people, all going. David, David Shachat. David Shachat, yeah. David Shachat, yeah. To go speak, all going in Buffalo, New York. He writes to the Rebbe, the Rebbe says, yeah. As he gets closer, he says, what am I going to talk to these people about? Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noyah. What am I going to talk to these people about? See, Babish didn't know. So he wrote to the Rebbe and he asked the Rebbe, what you do? So the Rebbe said, there's a universal thing to talk about. Go, go talk about tzedakah. Tzedakah is a good thing to talk about. Just talk about tzedakah. So, he, Rabbi Shachat didn't ask the Rebbe, and what should I talk about? That would be chutzpah. Okay, let me figure it out. So he gets his chance. It's in a, it's in a, um, a conference room in a hotel. He comes down, takes, the, takes his place on the podium. And he starts speaking about charity. And then he tells a story. Why he told the story, he doesn't know. But you know how the Abishta works, you know how the Rebbe works. Everything is, I put you there, do the shlichus. He starts telling over a story that there was once in a city, many, many, uh, a couple hundred years ago, it was uh, maybe a hundred and something years ago, there was once a city. And there was a very, very rich man. And people would come to him for tzedakah, 
And the man was a miser. A nickel you couldn't get out of him. This can nickel, not a pruta, not even a rusty penny, nothing. Gornish. One day, as it all happens to many of us, not us, but the people, he passed away. When he passed away, his children go and says, we'd like him to have a chasheva, a nice place in the cemetery. So they went and said, your father cannot go into a nice place. A nice place with all the great rabbis from the centuries before. Your father never gave a penny, never gave a nickel, never gave anything. So they put him into what they called like the Hefke place, like way out there. Like if this guy passing through, eh, they throw him over there. And that's where they put him. Sorry. Two weeks go by, there's a lot of knocking on the door of the rabbi. Who's the rabbi? The Toysis Yomtif. Toysis Yomtif. And the community is coming and they're saying, we're poor, we have no food. He says, you never came to me before. What's all the big knocking on the door? Why is it? So he decided to go investigate. They just talked to all the poor people. He said, where'd you get food? You never came on my door. There was no... He says, whenever we went to the baker, there was, there, was bread, there was bread and some groceries, and he always gave it to us for free. And we went to the butcher, he gave us chicken and meat, whatever it was for free. This went on for years. For years? I didn't know the baker and the butcher were such charitable people. So what happened was, he goes and investigates, and he finds out that he finds out that it was this miser who loved giving charity but didn't want anybody to think he was a charitable person. And he would pay the bill every single week to the butcher and to the baker. Very good. He goes and pays for it and everything. And now all of a sudden, the benefactor is gone. And now the Jewish community is going to have to come up and come up with money. So the Tesis Yomtev went and said to the Chedra Kedisha, and, and he said it in shul, when I turn 120, I do not want to be in the regular place. I want to be buried next to the miser. That is where I personally want to be buried. Very good. If he says a few more things, he gets a standing ovation. Very good. People come shake his hand. He's about to leave. When a galach comes over to him and he says, Rabbi, I need to speak to you. He says, okay, listen, I'm very tired. I slept here, this, that. He was in no mood of speaking to a galach. I said, you are tomorrow, 10 o'clock. I'll meet you down here in the in the uh, you know in the lobby. So Rabbi Shochat is downstairs ten o'clock. He's figured by ten oh five the guy won't even show up. He'll leave. By the time he came down, it was nine fifty five, the already the Galach was sitting there. So he walks over to him, he says, Hello, very good. You drink? No, no, no. So the Galach goes and says to him, Please tell me the story that you said last night. He says, Which story? The story about the miser. Tells him over the whole story. And the Galak starts crying. He says, I must tell you, my mother's a Holocaust survivor. And what happened was, she married my father. A goy's goy. He didn't say a goy's goy, but you know, it's a vision of us. And he brought me up in the church. I never knew anything. When my mother was dying, she comes over to me. She says, come over here. I have to whisper things in your ear. She whispers in his ear. He says, I want you to know that I'm Jewish. He says, Ma, what do you mean you're Jewish? He says, just listen to me. I don't have much to live. He says, when you find out that I'm Jewish, and you want to ask anybody, I'm telling you that my mother and her mother and her mother all come from a man who's buried next to a man called the Toysvis Yomtiv in such and such a city. There's a miser there, and he's buried next to him. That's who you are. You're from him. So he says, when you told over the story, he says, it brought me back to my mother on her deathbed. I totally forgot about it. But now that you brought it up, I would like to look into it. So Rabbi Shachat says, if your mother is a daughter to the daughter to this dude, then you're 100% Jewish. And mission control, we have issues. So he stayed a little bit longer. He made a few phone calls to relatives. He found out what he needed to find out. He's 100% Jewish. 
and he's talking related to this guy. Rabbi Shachat said, listen, I don't live here in Buffalo, but there's some phenomenal people that, oh, and he didn't live in Buffalo, he says, where well, you are, I'll get in touch to Ashliach there. Called up to Shliach, and he, he said, but what do I do? I have a big mega church. I have so many people, you know who I am? He says, no, I only know that you're a Jew. It's time to come home. He says, you're right. He goes home, he speaks to the rabbi. The more he spoke to the rabbi, the more he realized that his etzim hanisham, the essence of his soul was coming out. And he recognizes why this rabbi had to speak that night, which we now know is the Rebbe Zamais. Anyway, Rabbi Shachat had nothing to do with the priest many years go by, 15 years go by. Rabbi Shachat was in Yerushalayim for a bar mitzvah. He gets a patch on the back. And there's a guy with a beard. He says, Rabbi Shachat. He goes, yeah. He says, I want you to know. You remember me? He says, who are you? He says, I'm the Galach. I'm the priest. He says, I now here live with a, a wife and children. I live here in Yerushalayim. My dear friends. Rabbi, Rabbi Mantz. Yes. Oh, I know. There's one more part of the story before I finish. Yeah. Rabbi Shachat found out later through genealogy that he is Taka, a son after a son. He's related to the Taisis Yomtif. So the son of the Taisis Yomtif brought the miser's son back to Yiddishkeit. And that was a beautiful thing, etc., etc. Yeah, you wanted to say something? That was what I wanted to say. Oh, very good. So I want to say to everybody, you don't know why you're sent to where you're sent. You don't have to be a shliach. You're a plumber and you go to a plumber's home. You're a secretary and you have to go to lunch with somebody. You're a person who's a lawyer. You're a person, whatever it is. You're on an airplane and you're sitting down a seat and a half away from so-and-so. Do not think that it's random. Hashem turned over mountains, made a Kriyas Yamsov that you should be the one to go over to that Yid and give him and spoon feed his Pesach shame. And do not be surprised how good you will feel. And you're going to scream, Loma Nigara, why don't I do this more often? Why don't I have this yummy feeling more often? So everybody, it's easy to be motivated. It's easy to have a geschmack. It's a little harder to go and think about it and make it part of your kishkes. The Loma Nigara scream is, why am I being left out? It should bother you. Pesach Shein. Each and every one of us Enjoy the second chance because it's not like the banker and it's definitely not like, not like the baseball player. You'll transform that whole choice from before. Zedonius, Nasa, the merits and the brachas. And that is your new story. Welcome home, everybody. God bless you. Thank you, Rabbi, for inviting me to your beautiful community. And may we all have a beautiful Shabbos and a beautiful going into Shabbos. And may we all merit that we'll stand together with the Rashbi, together with the Nsidereno, leading the entire parade of everybody out of Golas. And the Nsidereno, who Beroisham, may Taka be now, now, and now. Amen. Chaim, everybody. I don't know if you remember. But I was in Earl Hanan uh, a couple of years ago, I mean, a couple of decades ago. And uh, before uh, every Lag Beimer, uh, you would come to Earl Hanan and you would give us a little bit of uh, uh, talking down of uh, how we need to uh, prepare for this great event with the children at the Pan Pacific Park. That yes, part. that was one of the places. Yes. So, so as a yeshiva student, we were very interested in giving up the sandwiches. sandwiches. Because um, you told us that we could have the leftover sandwiches. And the sandwiches lasted us from like a Bamer until the end of the year. <laughs> and when it had a little fridge, and we gave out lots of sandwiches, lots of good things. But there was one instruction you gave us there. I don't know, you probably remember this because you gave the same exact words in the two years I was in Yeshiva, three years I was in Yeshiva, 
the same exact words, three words, yeah, same exact words, three years as in Yeshiva. And they were like this. Tell the children, after they wash, to throw away the paper towels. They shouldn't throw it away like Michael Jordan at a distance. Point- I'm sorry, at uh, Mike Magic Johnson at a distance. Right. Three-pointer. Instead, it should be like Michael Jordan should be a slam dunk. Slam dunk. So I just want to emphasize that we're not looking for three-pointer shots. And you say Lam in the it means something specific that we could do that's in our hands. That it's a, just like a slam. When you used to do a slam dunk, you do it and it's done and you did it. So that right. said, similarly, like is a day that the Rebbe, as you said, it's, I, I totally, I, I've seen that and I know that. Um, the Rebbe told my grandfather, before Gomel Mosham, two different times, Kalayan Rebbe Shimon, I said, sent him a telegram, you want to do this parade, it was supposed to rain, Kalayan Rebbe Shimon, and I was there, I was a child, I remember, it was supposed to rain, I had my sign, in those days, people didn't really know how to make signs in Worcester, in the uh, Shiva there, so I had, it had these splinters on my hand from the sign, carrying the sign, everyone should have put on film, I was like, I don't know, five years old, and I remember it's starting to rain, and all of a sudden, cloud up to the line of Shimon, clear sky, the parade was, I'll never forget, I, mean, I was a little kid. Like, I, I, like imagine you were about Chris Amps, if you remember it. I remember the Rebbe said, Ryan and Shimon, and all of a sudden the sun comes out. It was, it's yeah. the day. And the day the sun comes out, the day the brachas come out, specifically, there's a lot of things that each of us could do, and we got to do them. And, and uh, some of the ideas you mentioned, we actually thought of and uh, got vetoed by various offices of the congressmen and whatever, but... Um, but there's more ideas I have to, we have to ask the question on the Gora, but we don't have to ask a question with a Magic Johnson question of whether it's going to work or not. We have to ask it with the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's Magic Jordan, Magic, uh, what's the Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. We got to yes. get it done. Does the Ike. Yeah, does the Ike. We're getting a dunk and, and, and dunk, the whole, uh-huh. dunk this whole world into the time of Gula. Chaim and Chaim Rach. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We don't want to wait. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We don't want to wait. I'm Israel. I'm Israel. I'm Israel. We, we want, want Mashiach now. now. We, we want, want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We don't want to wait. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We don't want to wait. Am Yisrael, I'm not for Mashiach. Hey, Am Yisrael, I'm not for Mashiach. We'll be here this year. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now, we don't want to wait. We want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now, we don't want to wait. Chaim. Chaim, Chaim. Chaim, Machnik. Chaim, 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 for joining. Is, is Rabbi Gottlieb still on? Well, he's probably, he looked pretty tired when we started the Fabrengi. He's probably sleeping already. Rabbi right, Gottlieb, he's still there? No, I guess not. Not there. All right. I see that our friend Ariel from Chile has uh, conked out. Baruch Hashem. He's for bringing since, I don't know what time this afternoon. Baruch Hashem. Um, is the day Abishim Mokhari says, Kroline Abishimim. Whatever's going on till now, it's a month of Eir, it's a month of Brachas, where Hashem says, I am Hashem, your healer. The difference between a healing that comes from Hashem, a healing that comes through a doctor, is that the healing that comes from Hashem is in a way that it's as if it never happened. Ani Hashem Refecha, the acronym of the month of Eir, I am Hashem, your healer, is the end of the Pasuk. The Pasuk starts with all the diseases that happened to the Egyptians, I won't give it to you. I won't give it. It means it's, there's nothing that's there. So even though there's a place of a disease and there's a time of a disease, but the vart of the power, the month of Iyar, is that's as if it was never there. It doesn't have to, we don't need to wait for Hashem to like Beimer. The Arizal had a custom three days before like Beimer, even before the week of like Beimer, it says in some, he would celebrate already like Beimer, the time of Shem Yochai's light is shining, anyone needs any kind of bracha or anything, 
it's 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 a day of Shimon, it's shining, and we need to we don't have to wait for Lag Beimer. We need to already Lag Beimer is it's interesting. All other days of the Omer, we count with La Omer, La Omer. The only the, the Ashkenazim say Ba Omer. The only day that everyone says Ba Omer, at least referring to the holiday, is Lag Beimer. The question uh-huh. is why do we say Lag Beimer? And the answer is Lag Beimer is Gematria Meishar Abeinu. Agbeimer is Gematria Meishar Abeinu. What's pshat? That Agbeimer is a day that the Meishar Abeinu shines. And in Meishar of every generation, his light shines in the fullest way, as it was by the Mitzvah Rebbe. That the whole year people would wait to ask Brachas the Mitzvah Rebbe and Agbeimer, because that was a day when, as every man said, the king was in the field in a different kind of way. Literally, the Mitzvah Rebbe went out in the field. And in similar ways, spiritually, there were brachas that people were waiting for a whole year. And they went to Mitzvah Rebbe Lagbeimer, and the brachas fulfilled, especially brachas for children, all brachas. So it's a time of tremendous revelation. And the Rebbe says, use it every moment, Lagbeimer. It's a day of special, special light and power and energy and connection. So it would be a good thing for Shabbos tomorrow, perhaps, to write a letter to the Rebbe, preparing for Lagbeimer, ask for a bracha on Lagbeimer, writing to the Rebbe. Okay, I, uh, as you could tell, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm searching for words over here to tell you that something big is happening in our world and we need to make ourselves vessels for it. Ask Hashem for, for help to, to be there. And uh, we should see Mashiach Sakeno tonight and celebrate Mishalayim Rakadesh, Pesach Sheni, with actually bring the Koran Pesach Sheni, the Pshute, the Gashmus, Matmas Artvachim. Oh, man. Chaim, Chaim. Chaim, Chaim. Chaim, Chaim.